I'm Amanda Patterson, Product Specialist for Rockwall Automation, Industrial Control Sensor, and Safety Products at Warner Electric Supply. Today I'd like to demonstrate how to add a 42EF right sight sensor via I.O. Link in Studio 5000. I have a project built already in Studio 5000 that I added this 1732E 8 IOL M12R, which is the IOLink master module, the on machine version for Rockwall. I'm going to right click and click on properties. This is the add on profile for the IOLink master. I'm actually going to, it's already all configured. I'm going to go to the IOLink tab and click on the IOLink tab. Notice you do have eight different channels on here that you can add eight different IOLink sensors to. My sensor is plugged into channel zero, so I will right click on channel zero and click on change. It's gonna bring up this screen. Right here, these three ellipses to change the device. I'm gonna click on change device. And it's gonna bring up this screen for selecting your IO link device. Um, I'm using a 42EF sensor, so I'm gonna open this 42EF. I'm actually using the 42EF D2MPAK diffuse type. Um, and then I'm using the dash F4 for the quick disconnect. Anytime you add a sensor in here, you have to get the correct catalog number. Otherwise, all your parameters aren't going to work correctly. Um, so I'll highlight the D2MPAK dash F4 and click on create. Now that we added this into our IO-Link device, I wanted to show you a couple of things on here. Main thing is this process data input. Um, you'll notice that it says triggered, margin, proximity, gain, and signal. Those are actually going to show up as controller tags in your program so you can monitor whether the sensor is triggered. Mon monitor the margin so if it's getting dirty, um, you can have somebody go out and clean it or you can shoot a shot of air at it. Um, proximity control, your gain is how much gain you're getting in your signal, and then your actual signal. Um, there is a couple of other options that you can use. This drop-down menu shows that we have um, triggered margin, proximity gain, contrast, and temperature. So there's a couple of different types of parameters that you can monitor on your sensor. Um, but I'm going to keep it at the first default as triggered margin, proximity gain, and signal. And go ahead and click OK. And then you'll see this warning come up that we're changing the module definition because we have added a new sensor. So go ahead and click yes. All right. I'm going to go back to the IO link tab again. And now you'll notice that we do have this sensor added into our tab. Under channel, channel zero IO link, I will highlight this sensor. And this bring us, brings up all the configuration information that you can use with your um, in, within your program. This first tab is the common tab and it just kind of shows generic information like what the part number is, what the vendor information is. Um, identification tab, same thing. We're not online right now so it's not going to show the product text and the serial number. Here you can add actually application specific name. Um, so you can name the sensor a unique name so that you can refer back to it within your program later. This is where we're going to do some of the device setup. So under the setup tab, you'll see we have the set point threshold. Um, this is basically the signal value that's required um, for your sensor output to turn on. So you can adjust this as you see fit for your application. If you want it to be a very small window where your sensor turns on and then off again, you can make it smaller or you can make it larger if you want your sensor to be on with larger distances. Um, we also have the proximity alarm set point. Ba basically, this is kind of showing your margin level is low. This defines when the green LED on your actual sensor should start um, flashing to reflect that your signal level is below the minimum threshold. Then we have the margin low alarm set point. Um, this is pretty much your high margin level high set point. So this defines when your green LED is gonna start flashing when 
um, the signal level is higher than the threshold that you defined. Then our average signal strength pretty much just shows the contrast. The larger contrast that you have for your signal, the better. Our output polarity, right over here under configuration, we, we can actually change these. Um, you can define whether your sensor is gonna be a light operate sensor or if it's gonna be a dark operate sensor. And then we have pin two mode over here that you can enable or disable when your sensor's in light operate or dark operate. Um, basically, when you have in IO link mode, all your, com your communications are done on pin four of the sensor. Um, pin, pin two mode enables the operation of the output on pin two, which is typically disabled in IO link mode. Um, this is used for applications where response time is extremely critical um, and the IO link response time might not be fast enough, i.e. like motion applications where you need that for overshoot or something like that, where you need that signal and you need to know it, it's right there. I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply and then okay, and then I'm gonna go online and download our configuration right now. Okay, I'll open the IO link master again. Go back to the configuration. And now we'll go to the diagnosis tab. Diagnosis tab basically gives you device status. So it says, okay, our device is operating properly. Um, there's, there's been no malfunction. So there's a last event right up here, no malfunction, and then zero error counts. One cool feature that I wanted to point out when you use a 42EF write site with a Rockwell master module using a Rockwell control system um, is the locator indicator. Basically, when you click on locator indicator, it activates um, and flashes the LEDs of the actual sensor. So it's really good for like maintenance mode where most, most machines don't have one sensor on it. They have multiple sensors on it. So if one of the one of the sensors needs maintenance, you can actually send a signal to the sensor to start flashing out on the machine so that a maintenance person can actually find the sensor on the machine instead of running around trying to figure out which one is sensor one, level two, or something like that. So I wanted to demonstrate that. So I'm gonna demonstrate that right now. So you just click on the locator indicator and click on apply. And then we'll apply the changes. Um, there's also this LEDs enable where you can actually enable or disable the LEDs based on your application. Um, one reason somebody might want to disable their LEDs is let's say you're, you have a theme park ride and it's a dark ride and you don't want your, the people that are riding your ride to see all these little LEDs all over for all the different sensors that are on the machine. You can actually disable them, but the sensor is still going to be working. The LEDs enable is always on by default, so you'd have to turn it off. We're gonna turn it off so I can demonstrate that right now. And then now the LEDs are all off on the sensor. And then this other part is um, the alignment mode. So basically the alignment mode, it enables the sensor to use the LEDs on the actual sensor itself to visually indicate the strength of the light signal that is reflected back. These, this is disabled by default as well, but you can enable it for 120 seconds, 240 seconds, or have it always enabled. Another one is this counter. So you can click, or you can it counts how many times your device has been triggered. So you can turn it on, click on apply. I'm gonna trigger this sensor a few times. And then click on refresh and I triggered it nine times. The triggered target duration, you can see how long something has triggered the sensor in milliseconds. And then you have the internal temperature information. And you can also reset the device, reset the counter, reset the timer from this tab. Under the advanced tab, this is basically the setup tab and the diagnosis tab and the identification tab 
all more in a list form. So it's not visual like it was within the setup and the diagnosis tabs. So I can just scroll down and it's basically all these different parameters that you can change that we've already changed. So that's what the add-on profile looks like. Now I'm gonna to go to the controller tags so you can see what tags, what tag information you get. The little IOLink master input. So right down here, remember that when in our process data, we had the triggered margin, low alarm, proximity alarm, gain, and signal strength. These are the tags that we get. So I can trigger the sensor. You can see this, the triggered tag going. And then our signal strength is about 32,000. If I pull my hand away from it, our signal strength is gonna go down and our gain goes down. If I pull even a little bit further away, my margin low alarm. Just went on. If you'd like more information about using IO Link in your applications, please contact your local Werner Electric Supply representative.